Hi, if you're looking for a list of 10 board games to start your collection that are great for both kids and adults, this is your list. All right, number 10. Number 10 is a game called Carcassonne. Carcassonne is an absolute classic. It's from Z-Man Games. It plays two to five players, and it plays well across all those. It's what's known as a tile lane game. So very simple mechanic. You draw a tile, you place a tile. You're playing over a shared village. So you're connecting roads to roads. You're connecting cities to cities. You're trying to close them off. Uh, if you have a meeple in there, you get the score, you pull it off. And so you're tracking your score along the way. Um, it's, you know, it's just very easy to teach, easy to play. Uh, play this one with my, my seven-year-old. Um, it will teach them math, it will teach them some strategy. Uh, it's really more tactical though in terms of, oh, I know I need this shape to close this out, so I'm gonna close this, I'm gonna close this there, or I hope I can keep extending this road, so I'm gonna keep building here. Uh, a very fun game, again, kids love it. It's a great couples game, uh, and two to four or five, that kind of odd number in terms of people to play with, uh, you're gonna play with all with it out of the box. So absolutely a wonderful game, Carcassonne. Number nine is Railroad Inc. Railroad Inc. plays two to six. So if you need six players, this is a great game for it. It is what's known as a roll and write game. So you can kind of see the picture here in the back where you roll the dice. Uh, it's a shared dice and everyone has to draw something using these dry erase boards. Everyone has their own dry erase board. You're trying to connect railroads to railroads, roads to roads. Um, there's certain intersections and junctions you want to connect you know, the most, uh, the most of these junctions without having open, open spots. Um, there's a couple versions of this. There's a red version. I think there's just kickstarted some new additional versions as well, which add in some, each have its own kind of flavor and expansion, but just the base game by itself is very fun. My seven year old really likes this. Um, and he just likes the drawing and connecting. And there's something satisfying about, about bringing one track from the other and connecting it. Great for adults as well. It can be very thinky. What's also good is it's a small box. You can easily travel with this and take it wherever you go. It's number nine, Railroad Inc. Number eight, Forbidden Island. Forbidden Island is a cooperative game, meaning you're playing together and you're fighting against the board. This is from the same designer as from Pandemic. So this plays two to four people. So the same designer from Pandemic this is from Game Right Games. And in Forbidden Island, you're on an island that, that uh, keeps slowly sinking and different parts of it keep sinking into the water. And so you need to stop the island from sinking, but really what you're trying to do is find treasure, trying to find four treasures, and then get off the island and leave via helicopter. Um, it plays, again, two to four and works well across there. And if you have two player, but you wanna play all four characters, you can do that as well to make it a little bit more complicated. This is a very fun game. It creates a nice challenge, but it's a good team challenge to try to do it. And you can always make it harder as well. It, there's, you can scale it up to make it, to make it harder, uh, and there's instructions for how to do so. We really like Forbidden Island, and it can lead to a lot of other games but, you know, like Pandemic that are a little bit more complicated, but it uses a very similar me uh, mechanic. That is Forbidden Island. Number seven, Sushi Go. Sushi Go is from Game Right Games, and it plays two to five people. Uh, it plays probably best three, four, and five, uh, but you can play two, so you can play it as a couple game. It is a simple drafting game, so everyone gets a hand of cards. Everyone takes one at the same time and passes their hand to the next person. You keep doing that until all the cards are gone, and then you add up the scores at the end. So if you have three types of sashimi, then you get you know nine points, or uh, two types of this, then you get five points. Or if you have um, a nigiri on top of a wasabi, you actually get triple the points. And so it's just fun and you add it all up at the end. Um, and so it keeps everyone engaged until the very end. Uh, and also teaches that drafting mechanic, which is used in a ton of other games. There are two versions of this. There's this and there's a Sushi Go Party, which comes in a, a bigger tin. And it just gives you more cards, some more variability. So this is cheaper and uh, and easier to travel with. The party version, you can play the same version because it has all the same cards, but there's just a lot more variability. So we just have this one and a lot of fun at Sushi Go. Number six is 
Hive Pockets. I'm gonna open this up a bit. So Hive is a game about different insects and they come in these nice chips. There's a bigger version, just regular Hive, but then there's Hive Pocket, which is easier to travel with and um, and it has some of the expansions in it that the traditional base game of Hive doesn't have. So this is a one versus one, so it's a two player abstract game, meaning that, you know, like chess or checkers where there's not visuals in terms of what's actually happening. Um, and, and so in this game, you're trying to each insect does a different move and you're trying to completely surround the opposing player's queen. And so it's very thinky. Um, you absolutely can and should play this against adults and you're going to think a lot, but the kids love playing it just because it's fun to do this. And I know the grasshopper hops over here and the ant can go all the way around uh, and the beetle jumps on top. And so, and it plays pretty quick, it plays 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, so we absolutely love this game and break it up pretty often. You know, this could be a good, good pre-dinner or after dinner, after dinner game and it teaches kids some tactics and some strategy. Um, you know, you can obviously just try to ease up on them in terms of, you know, leave some openings for them or point out moves that they should make or shouldn't make is kind of a slight modification, but we really like Hive Pocket. Number five is Camel Up. We talked about Camel Up in our video for games my seven-year-old loves, Seaman. Camel Up is a super fun game and this plays a lot of people. This plays three to eight. So this one, you know, this is the one you can't play with couples. But you can play with two couples and it'd be great for that and it'd great up to eight, uh, which is a tough number to play, but it's, it has that party game atmosphere so everyone can get into it and everyone can have fun. In the game, camels are racing around a track and you are essentially betting. It's, it's really a betting game. You're trying to figure out uh, which camel you think is going to win this round and which one's going to win the, the whole match and which one's going to lose. And then you get paid out at the end, whoever has the most money at the end wins. I think with adults, it's rowdy, it's fun. People are standing at the table, you see the dice come out and what's gonna show up. And then kids, you know, just like the, the, the fun of the camels going around the board. And the production is amazing. It's, it's a beautiful game. There's a, there's a pop-up um, pop tree that comes up. There is a pyramid where the dice come out of, it's called a dice tower. We really like Camel Up number five. Number four, as Hive drops, number four. It's a game called Animal Upon Animal. This is from Haba. Haba makes some amazing kids games. You'll notice them, they always have this yellow box. So this game probably plays the youngest. You know, this is, this is easily three and up. Now, you may look at this and think, well, this can only be a kids game. So this is a dexterity game and and so with that, you're stacking these animals upon the other animals, as you would think. Nice, chunky, wooden components. You roll a dice, and, uh, and it's just a lot of fun. And, and unlike Jenga, where if it falls over, the game's over, you keep playing until someone's out of dice. Um, sorry, someone's out of their figures. And it's just a lot of fun. I would much rather play this than Jenga. Uh, in terms of a dexterity game, just because it's not just about, there's, there's zero setup. There's almost zero teardown. It just can be a great filler for adults, but kids absolutely love this. And there's a bunch of versions. You can combine them together. We have the little version too. Um, so fun, animal upon animal. All right, we're getting down to it. Number three is an amazing game called Azul. So in Azul, you're drafting these tiles and then you're, you're putting them, essentially you're trying to put them on your wall and if they don't fit, they fall off your wall and you lose points. And it's just about completing rows and you get bonuses for, uh, for completing columns or having all of one color. And so um, it's really thinky in terms of what do you take and what does that give your opponent? And it's just an absolutely beautiful game. Absolutely beautiful game. When we were learning this game, we played it as a family and, and the fun part is my four-year-old won with a little bit of coaching and a little bit of help, um, but uh, but just to show that hey, we're all learning it, and he was able to he was able to win uh, just with a simple strategy of I want this color on it and I want that color. With adults, this plays two to four, and um, I, I just think it's an essential game. It's so easy to get people into it. It's easy to learn, um, you know. But there's definitely some you can once you get really good at it. There's certainly some strategy. And I'm going to draft these ones because I know you don't want them as a term that's called hate, hate drafting. Um, 
it's just it's just a gorgeous, simple, elegant game, and I can't recommend it more. That's number three, Azul. Number two is a game we've done a full review on, and it's called King of Tokyo. So I won't go too much in depth here, but King of Tokyo is Battle Yahtzee, where you are trying to do King of the Hill, you're trying to get into Tokyo and stay there, and you can punch everyone else while you're in Tokyo, but everyone can punch you. And by, what I mean by Battle Yahtzee is you roll five dice, and you can re-roll them up to three times, and you're trying to get certain outcomes. You can either try to get points or try to knock people out first. Um, this version we have here is the dark version, the dark edition. And so, um, you know, just slightly darker characters, but it adds some more mechanics. It basically has a built-in expansion from the base edition. So we really like that. We've also, we've played this so much, we've added in the power up and the Halloween expansion to give us more characters and more powers. Um, it's, it's just, it's really fun. And so really fun for kids. My four-year-old plays it up, but fun for adults too. Again, just an easy game to get people to the table. You can explain it pretty quickly. Um, you can eliminate some of the, uh, the, the game types or the game modifications um, in terms of like the wickedness track and things like that to keep it simpler for kids or even new adults. So really, we really, really love King of Tokyo. And number one, is the game that got me into modern board gaming, and so it's a very special place in my heart, is Ticket to Ride. Ticket, is, Ticket to Ride is a game from Days of Wonder, plays two to five, and plays good at all those player count. And you probably know about Ticket to Ride, but just in case you don't, it is about con playing trains, playing cards to play trains to connect tracks, um, or to connect cities, and then you make routes. When you finish those routes, you get points, you can draw more routes, um, and then ultimately when someone's out of trains, it, it triggers the end game and then you add up your score. And it's just, it's just so fun. It just really is. Um, you know, this game takes about an hour. Again, easy to play, easy to teach. Um, and if we have couples coming over and they want to play a game night, you know, this is, this is just an amazing one to go to. Um, and it just lets people understand that there's a world of board gaming outside of what they may already know and, and that they're fun. It, you know, they're not, uh, they're not intimidating and they're fun. With the kids, uh, played this one, there's my first ticket to ride or my, my first journey, which we started with. Um, there's shorter versions as well, like Ticket to Ride New York or Amsterdam or London. Uh, we have the Nor New York version, you're putting taxis on there. I recommend those as well. Uh, but really, you know, to me, any essential board game list needs to have, you know, one of these the, that needs to have the classics. And this is absolutely one of those classics. So Ticket to Ride is my top rec number one recommendation for board games that are great for kids, great for adults, and to start your collection with. Thank you. Thanks for watching our video. We are Family Board Games. Real family, real games, real fun. Please subscribe. Please like. Please like. Thank you so much.